So now we've got everything living in our base focus. So if I bring up lights, they come up in an interesting position because they're already living in that base focus position and that base cue that we have running underneath everything. But now we want to be able to have all the lights move uh, if we need to move on beat or change position. It just gives us kind of a little more dynamic variety that we can use on the fly to create energy in our song. Um, if I had more than 40 faders, I, m I would probably break out each individual fixture type. So I would have the ability to move the spots independent from the beams, independent from the washes. However, because we are limited on the amount of real estate that we want to take up without changing pages, um, we're going to have everything move together. Uh, this is still a fine solution, uh, and it still looks, looks really interesting. So let's look at a quick way to do that. So I'll bring up a couple lights so I can see what I'm doing. So first I'm going to go into blind, I'm going to create a new cue list. Um, I know that I want to put it on fader page two, uh, fader six, so that I know that right off the bat, because of my numbering convention, that is going to be cue list 26. So I'm going to create cue list 26, but while I'm at it, I'm going to create nine cues. Nine cues because I know that I have my nine focus positions that I want to record into those. So Q 26 slash one through through, nine. Here I'm using through through because I'm creating cues that don't exist. Um, so if I don't use through through, it's only going to create the first cue of this range. I'm going to change my display here into the spreadsheet format so I can see what I'm doing. I'm actually also going to change my flexi so we can see a little more on the screen as we're working. So now I'm going to go into my first cue. I'm going to use the next key. Next and last will bring me to my first cue. And if I want to apply uh, my focus palette to everything in this queue that can use that palette, I can just simply use the syntax recall from and tap on my, uh, my focus position. So I, here I said rec recall from focus palette one, and it put everything in home base. So I'm going to next recall from, and I'm going to hit my XX position. I'm just going to continue on down the line doing that for each of these queues. This is also part of the reason why I recorded them in this order is that the movement is pretty interesting and it's easy to record it in my cues. So I, now I've just made nine cues, um, each that each brings me to a different position. So I'm going to go back into live and I'm going to throw this on my fader. Q 26 slash enter, both bump buttons on this wing. And now if I hit go, we're going to see that everything's going to move all together. And I can use that in combination with my faders to create some interesting looks. Now if I had more room, or I wanted to sacrifice some other playbacks, I could then apply a, a group filter to this and, and copy this over to my other faders to isolate uh, just these specific groups, but I don't have to do any additional work. So the only other thing I have to do is I want to label these. If I look in my playback status right now, I see that I have a whole bunch of empty cues. So uh, the quick way to do that is, is going to be, say, I want to use focus palette, one through nine, copy to Q 26 slash one, and then in my soft keys populate with labels only, scene only, and notes only. If I choose label only, and I hit enter twice, it's going to actually take the labels from all of my focus positions and put them in my cue list. And I want to label my list because it's going to automatically take the, uh, the label of the first cue in the stack, which is not what I want, Q 26 slash label. I want to name it focus. So now I ha my stack is labeled on my fader. I do want to change these fader properties so that I can go backwards and forwards and not have to worry about running into the end of the list where things won't move anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go into our, our queue list properties, Q26 slash enter, open up the properties, and I want to set, again, my back from first and go from last to wrap. I do want to leave the stop and back buttons as they are. However, for this, I'm going to change my master from proportional to manual. And that's going to allow me to take this over with some manual timing if I need to by bringing the, moving the fader up and down. So now, every time I move the fader down or up, it's going to use that movement to advance me to the next cue. So if I hit the button, it's going to use my cue timing of two seconds. But let's say I want to this is a slower song and I want my movement to be kind of nice and elegant, I can also take this over with 
my fader and make it a little slower. Also in my cue list properties, I want to change my stomp mode to release. Uh, this is really important when we get into uh, these, these other faders that are, are modifiers to our, our, our intensities here. Uh, because we want to make sure that when we run the higher priority blue out cue list, it turns everything else off. Uh, and I like using the release property here as opposed to off because it, again, returns me to a known state where everything is at the top of the list. If I'm off and I'm working fast, I'm not necessarily exactly sure what's going to happen when I hit the button. At least if I use release, which is going to reset all these lists to the top, I know that I know what the first cue is going to be and then I can really quickly toggle through a bunch of it in the dark to get to where I need to go. I'm going to leave my background priority set to 4, and once again I'm going to change this to phantom, because I don't need my cue list to play along. So this is great. Now I have this on a button and it's easy to use. But let's say I want this to be a little more tactile. I want to have the options of where I'm going to send these. So I could remember that uh, the, the fifth cue in is um, my in crosshatch position. That's one way to do it. However, um, I can use some other built-in EOS functions to help me with this. So I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to create a scene uh, for each one of these cues, and then I can use my direct selects to access those directly on the fly. So to create these scenes, I'm going to select the first queue in my list, Q26 Q26 slash 1, attributes, scene, and I'm going to call this one home. I'm just going to hit next, attributes, scene, and this is going to be XX. Now as you can imagine, this is something I'm doing again and again. I've done it twice by this point, so my general rule is at this point, I would make a macro to do it. I already have one here that I've made already called uh, scene. So this allows me to just hit the next button, run that macro, now type in XXX. All right, so now I've created these scenes, and I can pull them up. I'm going to open a new, a new tab here on my, on my second screen. I'm going to choose Scenes, and I can see that they show up in this list here. I'm going to, because everything is a multiple of five, they filter kind of nicely when I do arrays of five by five. So you can see here, okay, cool, my home, my XXS position, and I have this nice chunk here that's all of the scenes that I need. So on my screen three, uh, I've already set this up. This is actually our quad split screen here. So if I was to go up, it is this guy right here. Um, so if I was to look at what this is, this is two fader displays here at the bottom so that I can have a larger readout for my upper faders. And then it is just two direct select displays on top. And what I'm using is I'm using a six bank direct select display. And because I can change the rows and columns per bank, I'm using dummy palettes as my labels. So for example, here, my bottom, my bottom bank here is a, this is a custom direct selects array that I can put anything I want into. And then above that, I actually have a one by one focus palette bank. Five, so it's one row, one column, and I'm using focus palette nine 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 eight as my dummy label here. Uh, I want to use a focus palette because then it's the focus palette color, so I can easily recognize it, that it, this is dealing with focus positions. Because it's only one row and one column, it's easy for me to find because my page is also going to be nine 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 eight because there's only one thing on this page. I actually want to turn off these arrows, because I'm not a big fan of the arrows, so I don't need to go anywhere. I'll do it on the other side, too, for consistency. So I've already set this up so that these don't overlap. You can see that the numbers are set up so that they're actually they're in these, these banks. Um, they're, they're offset, and they don't overlap in any way. Each of these banks is actually 5 by 11 wide. I, you set it up however it makes sense for you. I like 5 by 11 because a lot of times I'm working here, I'm working in lateral uh, displays, and I find, in this case, that break in the middle, I find that distracting. To me, it, it, it breaks up what should otherwise be visually continuous. Um, also, I work in numbers of 10 a lot, uh, ten, 10 main color palettes that I use, 
10 main focus palettes that I use. You know, 11 spaces gives me the ability to do my 10 palettes plus a label. And it looks pretty, and I always think that style counts in these sorts of things. So I'm actually going to use my group as my label. Because this, this fader um, and this playback applies to everything in my rig, I'm going to use my all group. Let's label this all, and now I'm just going to populate this with my scenes. So on my second screen here, I'm going to go back to my scenes. I'm going to select my home scene and double tap on the first tile here to populate it with that. And I'm going to go through and just populate each one of these tiles sequentially, these scenes. And so now these are tied directly to this list. So now if I bring up, say, my spots, I can advance them by hitting the button on my focus list. But I can also double tap on this tile and have them move as well. So the reason that that works it's because I've gone into my setup under device displays, I have enabled direct select double click. This means when I double click anything in my direct selections, it's going to play that target back on everything that target can play back on. In the, in the case of a scene, it's actually going to take me to that queue that that scene references. So now I can take everything and send it home. I can send it, send it into a high position if I'd like. And it's going to use the timing of that queue to do that. So by combining a single playback stack with uh, these scenes on custom direct selects, I have a tactile rig both to make sure that when I press the button something happens, but also if I want to get a little more specific about what's going on, I can use the touch screen as well to send these lights into a position. And then I can isolate what is moving by what, or what we see moving by what fixtures are on in my rig.